Hey everyone, how are you doing today? This is Omoza from Team 5795 and I'm here today for a quick YouTube video on how to stabilize the print bed for a Creelty Ender 3 Pro printer. So let me quickly show you how unstable this print bed is. As you can see here with me shaking it, it's a lot of give and it's not very tight so the bed will shake along the rails. So let me quickly show you some examples of what spaghetti prints are. This is a small spaghetti print sample that I got right as I started my print process. So, you know, I went ahead and restarted my printer after I fixed the issue. And here I'll show you a much larger spaghetti print that I got halfway through a overnight print. Really disheartening to wake up to this, but, you know, as people in the STEM community, it is our job to fix problems, so I went ahead and fixed the problem and get a new print ready, and it was done the next day. So this wasn't a complete failure, but you know, let's do some proactive work to make sure this doesn't happen. And to do that, we have to make sure that our print bed is stable. Now you'll see that on the right side of the two sets of wheels, you have some that are lifted by a hexagonal pair of standoffs while the left side is being held up by a cylindrical pair of standoffs. Using the two standoffs on the right side, you can tighten them with the wrench to both move them vertically and horizontally and position the wheels correctly along the rail to have a stable print bed. Now, it is possible to go too far when doing this as what can happen is if you tighten the wheel standoffs too much you can either bring the wheel up horizontally too far or lower too much that it doesn't align correctly with the center of the rail track and there's a lot of friction against the edge of the rail or if you bring it too far in horizontally it can have a lot of friction as it's being pushed into the rail track both these scenarios end up with the rail uh, grinding against the wheels and often warping the wheels and then you're going to replace them which is a whole other hassle that I don't think anyone wants to deal with. Now that we saw how to fix the print bed and how to stabilize it, let me show you how it works and why it's this way. So I have a quick blender animation showing the wheels with the hexagonal standoffs and as you can see the actual threaded hole for the standoff is offset from the center. So when you twist the standoff, you're not actually just rotating along an axis, you're rotating with some horizontal movement. So as you screw the standoff in, you bring it up, of course, as you would with any other screw. And also, depending on how much you rotate it, you can add or remove a horizontal position relative to the rail. So you can do a half rotation to bring it closer to the rail or you know go quarter rotation to bring it a little bit closer or a little bit farther and so it gives you that option while also helping you find the sweet spot vertically so in this sense you have one set of wheels the right side in this case closing in on the left side and effectively clamping down on the rail and this is why you want to make sure it's not too tight and you don't uh, clamp it down too much because the pr uh, pressure and friction caused by grinding against the rail can damage the wheels. Alright everyone, this is going to be the end of the video. It was a nice quick video and thank you for watching and hope you figured out how to fix your print bed. Creelty Ender 3 or, uh, or any Creelty printer is pretty common for amateur printers. It's my first printer. It's a lot of the first printers of my friends. So I hope this video helped you learn a little bit of fine-tuning and troubleshooting your problems with that printer and thank you so much have a good day and like and subscribe it's 5795 back to drawing board thank you